Hey guys, in this video, let us discuss about how to create an immutable class in Java. Let us understand what is an immutable class, what are the steps to create an immutable class, where exactly these immutable classes are getting used. We will see an example and finally we will close it up with what are the benefits of using an immutable class. Let us get started. What is an immutable class? An immutable class is one where once the objects are created cannot be modified. Few examples are string, integer and all the wrapper classes from our java.lang package. Now let us see the steps to create an immutable class. First declare your class as final. String class in java is final. It means you cannot extend the class. Next, make all the fields private which means it is not visible outside the class. And these fields should be final which means you cannot change the value of the properties once it is created. Do not provide setter methods. This means nobody can assign values for this particular object using the setter method. Then how to assign values for that? You need to initialize these properties using a constructor and return the copies of mutable fields. Suppose if your class is having list as instance variable rather than returning the original reference you need to return a copy of that reference. Okay. So to put it in a nutshell to create an immutable class your class should be final your instance variable should be private and final. You should have a parameterized constructor. You should have only getter methods. If your class is having mutable fields rather than returning the original reference, create a copy and return that. Okay. Where exactly these immutable classes are used? They are used in different scenarios. In value objects. It means in DTOs and model classes. You should create your DTOs and model classes as final classes. Instance variable should be private and final and if somebody wants to access they have to access it only using the getter methods. Allocate values for the fields using constructor. This is done to prevent unintended modification. Similarly in configuration settings. I don't want others to change the configurations for my application or for my database. Then I can go in for immutable classes. For caching. Whatever data I am caching, nobody should come and change it. So for that, go in for immutable classes. Thread safe shared object. The name itself says, multiple threads are sharing the same object. It means the value should not be changed. So in that case, create an immutable object. I want to get the auditing details and the log of my application, which should not be manipulated. So they can be immutable classes. Immutable collection. This is to prevent modification of a list and to have a list with the set of fixed values. Okay, now let us see how to create an immutable class. Let us get started with our coding. I already have my Java project. Now let us create a class. Select src, right click, new class. Let me give the package name as com.srishti.training. Let me give the class name as user profile. This is a model class. So let me make this model class as immutable. The first step is the class should be final. Now let me add two properties. That is two instance variables. The instance variable should be private and final. Private final string username. Private final string email. So the instance variable should be private and final. Then we need to have a parameterized constructor. Go to source generate constructor using fields. Select both click generate. Now we should not have any setter method. We need only the getter method. Go to source generate getter setters. Let me open email. Usually we have set email, get email, set username, get username. That is we will have both getter and setter methods. 
But now, if you notice, we are having only getter method. Why? Because we have made our instance variables final. So, by default, the content assist is also not providing the setter method. Allow setters for final methods. This means explicitly you need to remove the final modifier. Only then setter methods will be allowed. We don't need it. So, let me select only the getter method. All set. Now, let us create a main class. Select your package. Right click new class. Let me give the class name as main. Select public static void main. Click finish. First, let us create a user profile object. User profile user is equal to new user of. We need to provide the values for username and email using the parameterized constructor. Priya, Priya at gmail.com. Now, let me print the username and email. Siso user dot get username and Siso user dot get email now we don't even have an option to change the value i don't have setter method yes no setter methods and i cannot even call the instance variables directly because we have made the instance variables as private now let me run this just to see the output so now we have created a immutable class our user profile is an immutable class i hope this is clear now let us see what will happen if I add a mutable list to our class? So let me add the third instance variable private final list of string courses. Initially, let me not do any changes. I will go with the parameterized constructor and a getter method without creating a copy. We will see what is happening to our immutable class. Then we will come and modify it. First is go to source, generate constructor using fields i want all the three so after this i will remove the constructor which is having two parameters import list then add getter method for courses go to source generate getter setters courses click generate okay all set go to the main class it is expecting a third parameter so i need to create a list of courses list of string Courses is equal to new array list and add two courses. Courses dot add Java. Then courses dot add Angular and pass the third parameter as courses. Just like the other two, let us try to print user dot get courses. Till this, no change, no issue at all. Let me run this. We will get a proper output. In the case of other two instance variables, you don't have any possibility of changing it. You don't have setter method. You cannot call the property directly. In case of the other two instance variables, they are of type string. Even if you are using integer or double or any wrapper class, you don't have any choice of changing the variable value. Why? Because you are having only getter method. You don't have a setter method and you cannot even call the instance variable directly because they, they are private. But in case of courses, after I get the list user.getCourses, I can add new values to the courses because it is immutable. I can call dot add method and let me add react. And again user.getCourses dot I can call any method of my list. So let me use the method set. At index 1, I will change from angular to spring. After this, let me print the courses again. User.getCourses. Run this. Now you can see the output is completely changed. The first index is changed from angular to spring. React is added to the courses list. This means courses is mutable. You should not have a mutable object in an immutable class. We should make this list also immutable. So what are the steps that we need to do? Let us go back to the class. You should not assign it like this. Instead of assigning the values that is coming from the main class directly, you need to create a copy of this list. Means 
create a new array list and pass courses as parameter. Maybe I can have a different variable name n courses. Here also n courses. That is, you are creating a new list which is a copy. Let me import array list. Now we need to change the getter method also. In this case, you are returning your original reference directly. Do not return the original reference. Return a copy of this reference. Okay. As in, return again new array list of courses. I am supposed to return courses. Courses is my original. But instead, I am creating a copy of this original and I am returning it. Now, let me save this. Without doing any modification, let us try running this. Now you can see the output. In the second case also, the list is not modified. This means the list has become immutable. As in, even though after getting the list, you are trying to add new values to this list or modifying the existing value, the original is not affected because all the time you are returning a copy of this original list only. When I call get courses, I am not getting the original courses list Rather, I am getting a copy of this original list only. That is why the modifications are not occurring. So, I hope it is clear. Now, let us quickly see what are the benefits of using an immutable class. First is thread safety. This means when I am creating an immutable class, the objects of this class cannot be modified. So, all the threads can share the same values of that particular object. You don't have to go in for synchronization. Better performance avoids unnecessary changes in the instance variables. Security prevents unintended data modification. Reliable caching. This means when you are working in applications, you need to cache the data. This data should not be modified at any point of time. In these scenarios, using immutable classes will be of great help. That's all about immutable classes. Thank you.